Biological men do not belong in private women's spaces, period. Women's rights are human rights. Pass it on. Your mental illness will not become my new normal. Tensions are rising in Congress after Republican Representative Nancy Mace introduced a controversial measure targeting incoming Democratic Representative Sarah McBride, the first openly transgender member of Congress. Well, number one, I want to see this in the House Rules Package. Um, I want to make sure that no men are in women's private spaces, and it's not going to end here. This shouldn't be going on any federal property. If you're a school or an institution that gets government funding, this kind of thing should be banned. I think it's sick. It's twisted. Mace's proposed resolution seeks to prohibit transgender individuals from using restrooms that align with their gender identity within Capitol buildings. This directly impacts McBride, who is set to be sworn in as Delaware's representative in January. Mace has doubled down on her stance, stating on social media that, quote, biological men do not belong in private women's spaces, period. Hey everyone, I told you I wasn't gonna stop with Capitol Hill. I'm filing another bill tonight that would ban biological men from women's spaces on all federal property all across the country. This fight starts here, it starts now. Men are not allowed in women's spaces, period. Full stop, end of story. House Speaker Mike Johnson addressed the growing debate, emphasizing a balanced approach to handling the issue. Look, I'm not gonna get into this. We, we welcome all new members uh, with open arms who are duly elected representatives of the people. I believe it's a, it's a, a, a command that we treat all persons with dignity and respect, and we will. And I'm not going to engage in, uh, in, in silly debates about this. Um, there's a concern about the uses of restroom facilities and locker rooms and all that. This is an issue that Congress has never um, had to address before, and we're going to do that in deliberate uh, fashion uh, with uh, member consensus on it, and we will accommodate the needs of every single person. That's all I'm going to say about that. The measure has sparked widespread outrage among Democrats and LGBTQ advocates, who have labeled it discriminatory and an unnecessary culture war. Representative Becca Balint called the proposal hateful, while Representative Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez described it as plain bullying. Top House Democrat Hakeem Jeffries also called the bill bullying. Transgender rights advocate Alejandra Caraballo warned it might escalate to further restrictions, such as enforcing dress codes or misgendering McBride in Congress. The notion that this incoming small House Republican conference majority is beginning to transition to the new Congress by bullying a member of Congress. This is what we're doing. This is the lesson that you've drawn from the election in November. This is your priority, that you want to bully a member of Congress as opposed to welcoming her to join this body so that all of us can work together to get things done and deliver real results for the American people. U.S. Representative Marjorie Taylor Greene of Georgia weighed in on the controversy surrounding Sarah McBride, saying, I, I absolutely agreed. Um, you know, Sarah McBride, as he calls himself, formerly Tim McBride, is a biological man, and he should not be using any of our restrooms in the capitals, um, in, the, in our office buildings. But Nancy Mace's resolution doesn't go far enough. Her resolution is just a statement by Congress saying that Congress disagrees with something. Uh, we need something more binding, and that's what I just brought up at the microphone, Sarah, in our conference, is I directly asked uh, Speaker Johnson um, what the men in our leadership are going to do about this. While the debate rages on in Congress, Representative-elect Sarah McBride remains focused on the reason she ran for office in the first place, serving the people of Delaware. I am very mindful that my responsibility is not to any other community that I'm a part of other than the community that is the state of Delaware. My job is to be the best member of Congress that I can be for Delawareans, working on all of the issues that matter. And that will be the only way that I can guarantee that while I may be a first, I'm not the last. So I'm not doing this to, to make history. I'm not doing this to be a trailblazer. I'm doing this to give back. I'm doing this to serve. I'm doing this to make a difference. Mace has defended her resolution as a matter of privacy and safety, citing personal trauma as a factor in her push for the measure. 
She claimed the backlash, including reported death threats, has only strengthened her resolve, stating she would double and triple down on the issue. Is this effort in response to Congresswoman McBride's coming to Congress? Yes, and absolutely, and then some. I'm not going to stand for a man, uh, you know, if someone with a penis is in the women's locker room, that's not okay. And I'm a victim of abuse myself. I'm a rape survivor. I have PTSD from the abuse I've suffered at the hands of a man. And I know how vulnerable women and girls are in private spaces. So I'm absolutely 100% going to stand in the way of any man who wants to be in a women's restroom, in our locker rooms, in our changing rooms. I will be there fighting you every step of the way. Later, Speaker Johnson elaborated on his position, reaffirming his personal beliefs while calling for dignity for all members of Congress. Hello, everybody. Um, I just want to make a statement for all of you here and be very clear. I was asked a question this morning at the leadership gaggle, and I rejected the premise because the answer is, is so obvious. For anybody who doesn't know my well-established record on, on this issue, let me be unequivocally clear. Uh, a man is a man, and a woman is a woman and a man cannot become a woman. That said, I also believe, um, that's what scripture teaches, what I just said, uh, but I also believe that we treat everybody with dignity. And so uh, we can do and believe all those things at the same time. And I wanted to make that clear for everybody because there's lots of questions, but that's where I stand. I've stood there my whole life and those are facts. McBride, meanwhile, has responded with calls for kindness and focus on policy priorities, criticizing the measure as a distraction from real issues like affordable housing and health care. On social media, she wrote, Americans go to work with people from diverse backgrounds every day and engage respectfully. I hope Congress can do the same. This move is part of a broader push by some Republicans to restrict transgender rights, an issue that has increasingly become a focal point in U.S. politics. Critics argue it's a calculated effort to appeal to a conservative base, as President-elect Donald Trump has vowed to roll back transgender protections. With emotions running high on both sides, this resolution not only raises questions about rights and inclusion, but also highlights the deep political divides in America's legislature. As Congress prepares for its next session, all eyes will be on whether this proposal gains traction or is left behind in the face of mounting criticism.